Well, hello, everyone. My name is Reverend Bobby Becker. I'm the Senior Minister Spiritual Leader of the newly created Namaste and Seal Beach Center for Spiritual Living. And this is John De Palma, Reverend John De Palma. Yay, John. Hey. <laughs> and I am formerly the interim minister of Seal Beach, and now I am the coach consultant for this wonderful unification of communities. And we're working on a lot of interesting stuff, and hopefully you'll be interested in what we have to talk about today. I'm just sure they will, John, because this is interesting stuff. So um, we've been focused for the last three Sundays after service. We've been dialoguing about safety, and we've talked about what safety is from sort of the mildest idea of safety to the most extreme idea of it. And we've continued to talk about our expectations of community, expectations of self. And we thought that today um, we'd go a little bit deeper into this idea of what, how self-awareness is safety. And so I want to talk a little bit going back to this question about what is safety. And I thought I would um, kind of quote Bruce, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Um, and he says that when we're in growth mode, we go towards a stimulus and we open our arms and we completely embrace it and take it in. But when we're in a protection mode, which is when we don't feel safe, we, we run away from the stimulus. In fact, everything in our body is designed to fuel that fight or flight. And if we can't fight or flight because of trauma, whatever it is, we shut down completely. And so that really kind of reduces our ability to live with discomfort, depending on our interpretation of what safety is in, in comparison to what, safe, to what discomfort is. So John, talk a little bit about safety from your standpoint. As well, you know, we, we, especially with uh, the pandemic and everything that's transpired since then, we often think of safety and as comfort of, you know, just being able to kick back in my recliner and zone out and streaming TV or whatever. And that does give us a sense of comfort and protection. But if we want a soul-centered life and we want to step up into a greater experience of what life can bring to us, that means that we have to perhaps look at discomfort, as Reverend Bobby was pointing out in that quote from Bruce Lipton, as an opportunity for growth. And what that means is we've got to learn some basic competencies about how do we deal with growth, because growth means change, and change is relentless. And so there's no avoiding it. And so we have to decide at some point, and many of you decided because you're in a community like this, many of you decided that you want a deeper, richer spiritual life. And so that's what is at the core of these discussions about values and about safety. I think that's an important point when you talk about discomfort and wanting to be comfortable and sitting in a recliner. The challenge with that recliner, though, is often in that recliner, we're watching TV or being distracted by something. But when it all gets turned off, and if I just sat in that recliner, then I get to live with what goes on in here. That's right. And that's not very comfortable if I'm not working on anything, if I'm just sort of cruising and just trying to maintain a level of comfort. So what I'm doing is just trying to distract myself from what I think about myself and my world. And if you're anything like me, you have a whole uh, Supreme Court of judges up there. <laughs> Absolutely. I got a whole committee of people. And I was talking about this yesterday, John, at service where about the inner critic and how the inner critic really judges. And oftentimes for me at least, where that goes is I'm not supposed to feel particular things. I'm not that inner critic kind of really judges what kind of experience I'm supposed to be having as if when I'm in, in, in a place of discomfort, as if I shouldn't be there, that I'm doing something wrong, that I'm, that I'm not doing it right, or I don't have the right tools or whatever that may be. And I think about our practitioners and so, not everybody is going to be a practitioner, but when you go through practitioner training, you learn these really great spiritual tools. You learn the mechanics of these spiritual tools. You go deep at a particular level, but certainly you're not addressing it all. You're learning how to address it. Then you graduate after two years. It takes two years and you panel and then you go on 
And now you really learn what it means to be a practitioner, which is how do I use those tools? And so one of the, the tools we do use is spiritual mind treatment, which is an affirmative prayer. If we don't know, or let me back up, if, we, if that prayer, that treatment doesn't evolve, if we don't learn exactly what treatment is all about, what is its purpose, how do I apply it? And if all I'm trying to do is change conditions, then I'm really not doing anything to, tr to treat what really treatment is for, which, which is to treat this and what this thinks about those conditions. And to recognize what is happening up here through our life is really because this is not separated from this. No. So it's all connected. And so when we have whatever condition we've been animating, uh, however that falls on us, doesn't just impact our thinking, it also impacts our physiology. And so there's something more that must be done than just trying to think our way out of a situation. And as the practitioner evolves, they begin to develop a deeper self-awareness of what's really happening. And that self-awareness comes from, well, what am I feeling, right? What's happening? Because if I only think about it, then I'm ignoring or I'm trying to ignore, or I'm trying to avoid all the feelings that I'm having about something. But the feelings, that place in the heart is the actual place we wanna go. So often in our culture, we're disconnecting. We're not, we're sort of stop, we sort of stop up here and we don't go any further. John's right, our physiology is absolutely affected. Hormones, blood, everything that moves through us is affected by what we think. And scientists, science is finding that exactly what we're talking about really does promote a greater sense of well-being. In many of the conditions that we seek to change, very often our health issues are because we've shut off from here mm -hmm. and we're not recognizing that those feelings are deeply embodied in wherever, our hearts or our guts or whatever. And so that's where we are looking at these conditions. Why am I uh, having this issue in my life? Perhaps because we haven't paid enough attention to what's going on in our body as a result of the conditions that we're viewing. So if I'm not a practitioner, I can still learn these tools. I don't have to be a licensed practitioner in this community to learn these tools that allow me to move a little bit more out of what I'm thinking about into more what I'm feeling about it because that's what that's where we want to address what's going on in our lives. So with these tools that we have, John is going to talk a little bit too, though, about the fact that some of the buttons that come up when we're experiencing something, we can take these tools and address this, but we need to know what's going on in our bodies and our minds in order to know exactly where we're at when an event happens. So, John? Well, you know, the, the saying is, uh, I may push your buttons, but I didn't install them. Yes. <laughs> and so it, what, what that means is we may have chronic uh, challenges in terms of how our buttons get pushed, but these may be paper cuts as opposed to deeper tissue issues. And so we have to be become uh, develop a competency to really become aware of how these are coming in and how they're impacting our lives. So there are definitely um, six uh, types of things that we have to be aware of in terms of the variance of the trigger that is um, causing us to experience discomfort. So the first is the intensity of the trigger itself. What is the alarm about? How intense is it? If it's really intense, that means one thing to me. If it's mildly intense, like a, a paper cut, then I have to be able to look at it from that perspective. Both of involve awareness. The second is the sensitivity uh, to the uh, stimulus. Um, how much or little of it is tr being triggered. Um, so when we look at that, how sensitive am I to uh, an insult by a family member versus uh, a colleague versus uh, just a stranger in a restaurant. Or my 17-year-old, um, whatever it might be, right? <laughs> uh, the third is the specific specificity, the range of experiences that set that off. Um, it can be 
this one thing really gets me every time, or it could be a range of things that really just build up over uh, a period of time. So that might mean acute versus chronic in a sense of how I'm responding to it. The fourth is um, the window of tolerance, which means what kind of state am I in when I receive this trigger? Am I uh, exhausted? Um, am I, you know, is it after a long day of and coming home and our significant other says something to us uh, where you just don't have very big window at all? Right. Uh, the next is the refractory period, how long I've been stuck in a lower brain function. You know, I've been fuming about it ever since I left this morning. We had a big argument and I'm on my way to work. And, you know, I still haven't let go of it by the time I got to work. So watch out everybody in the office because I'm going to be a bear all day. Gotcha. And the last is the access to consciousness. What is my spiritual practice been like? What is my level of self-awareness? Do I even know that this key moment, I've assigned a certain meaning to it, and the meaning just has a chain reaction of things. At what point do I stop the chain reaction and say, oh, yeah, been here before. I recognize it for what it is. And I can now start a different practice, taking a deep breath, some sort of interrupting strategy so that I can start to come back to my prefrontal cortex to start to create a deeper meaning to it. Makes me think too, because a lot of times what we do is we may change jobs because we're unable to address it or, or partners or where we live and doing a geographic isn't going to resolve or mitigate the situation. We have to address it. Sometimes we do have to leave a situation for sure. Right. right? But how often do we just walk away without thinking that what's happening on the outside isn't as big as what's happening on the inside? Yeah. No matter where you go, there you are. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is this really brings to mind what spiritual community is all about. As we go through this, um, continue through this unification, August 27th, we're going to start looking at what the new name is going to be. Um, we're going to be visioning. Uh, we're going to be, we've got 15 people that we that, that will have signed up. That's going to be part of the team to take all that visioning and, and to really sit with it and, um, and pull up the most creative name in what seems restrictive, but I have this feeling that we can be quite creative. What well, am I going to. Especially because um, Reverend Bobby has started uh, the mindfulness training and the four agreements where we can start to develop some competencies about the awareness that we need to address these deeper issues. So right. when the name change comes up, are we triggered by anything with that? Exactly. Work through that and express our feelings in a safe environment. And can I let go of uh, any attachments that I have, which is what, what is mindfulness is great about. What are the attachments I have to some of what, e what either community's name was? and or where we're at or where we're going. How open I can be is as creative as I'm going to allow myself and contribute to the same creativity in others. This is a very exciting time to be part of this community. Yeah. And we're very blessed to have Reverend Bobby leading it. And hopefully I can help coach her through the, through the development pieces and we'll come up with some uh, additional information through these through this medium and uh, uh, look forward to your feedback and creating something new. Awesome. So John and I are going away for a couple weeks, so you won't see another video for a little while, but we're going to be talking about values and the care model and moving through those values in the context of what we're creating. So enjoy this video. We hope you did have a great couple of weeks and um, just Join us, see what's happening. We're pretty excited about all of it. Be well. Thank you.